Hey guys, how's it going? It's Nick here once again, as always, uh, from Guangzhou, China. Uh, as you can see, I'm at my office, uh, just overlooking the city of Guangzhou. <music> Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. It's not business related, uh, although it can possibly help you in business. But in the light of me coming to my 27th birthday, uh, my 27 really approaching, I wanted to do a video directly, directed specifically at 20 something year old guys. And this can be, you know, this can bring a lot of value, I think, to a 16, 18, 19 year old. Basically, if you're mid 20s or before that, I think that I can maybe provide some valuable insight of how my life has panned out so far because I feel like I've been in a lot of ups and downs. I've been on a scale of really broke to, you know, having money. I've been on, you know, living in Canada and just like not traveling to traveling a lot and covering the world. And I think from my personal perspective, I kind of narrowed it down to a few really key things that really were responsible for helping me achieve the life that I have right now. And if you are a lady or if you are outside of the age range that I'm talking about, for example, you're older than me, I would love to hear your perspective on what I have to say because, you know, not everyone's the same and we all have different opinions and I'd love to hear yours too. And I think it would be just as valuable for the guys who are younger to hear what I have to say as it would be for them to read other people's feedback, uh, whether you agree or disagree. So um, I made a short list here and I think one of the um, one of the first things, I think one of the biggest things uh, that I can recommend to guys from an earlier stage in your life is really rethink your life path because the traditional life path as it dictates is high school, college or university, I uh, get a nine to five uh, in a corporate or maybe even, you know, from home, but most of the time it's corporate. Find a girlfriend, get married, have children, grow within the company until you reach a higher level and then find security by purchasing uh, property and investing. That has worked out really well, seems like, for previous generations, but I don't think this is the kind of game that we're playing anymore. Personally, so for my personal experience, you know, university, I went to two different universities just for my bachelor's degree for seven years, which is kind of dumb if you think about it because it takes four years to get your degree, but I really didn't know what I was doing. Like, I wanted to do psychology and I wanted to do history. I went to U of T Scarborough, then I went to Ryerson University. And I bounced around all these majors. I did entrepreneurship for a semester. I did, I did accounting. I did finance for a semester. And then I ended up doing uh, marketing. The reason why I think a major reason why I went to university was to appease my parents. If truth be said, I the only part of the university that I really enjoyed was the social aspect. So being in a fraternity, meeting up with people, uh, you know, being part of the groups and hanging out on campus and having a reason to be there. There's probably only about three or four courses out of those seven years that I've done that I truly enjoyed that I couldn't wait to read more about. Everything else just felt tedious, like I had to do it. Yeah, so I really enjoyed the aspects of the university where it's social, you know, you're part of the, you're part of the clubs, and uh, you know, only enjoying about four courses overall. Times are really changing. And I'm seeing this firsthand being in China and being around the digital entrepreneurship uh, uh, and digital nomad communities, like many of them around Chiang Mai, around Budapest and Colombia, uh, Medellin, Colombia and Guangzhou, China. Right now, you can literally be a high school dropout, learn an online skill such as copywriting or Facebook marketing or Shopify uh, web store development, throw up your resume on LinkedIn and Upwork and build an agency within the next two to three years where you hire other people to do the marketing for you, to apply for jobs, actually do the actual work and, and having an account manager who will manage your customers and your work team. Nothing's stopping you from doing that and you can start that up with little to no expense to yourself. So I think this is the era of self-education and if you are going to university, if, for example, you are doubtful of whether you want to do what you what you are in, for example, sciences, sciences like being a doctor or being a chemist, I, th I think those are essential to go to university for. You just cannot get a job in the field that you want uh, without having a university degree. But if you're going there for, let's say, you know, uh, business, like just a general degree of business, I promise you, you will learn a lot more about business 
going door to door and doing door to door sales and maybe launching a product on either Amazon or, you know, maybe even doing like white label drop shipping store, you know, you'll learn a lot about business that way. Then you will go into these classes because also no offense to Ryerson, but I found their curriculum really outdated, especially their entrepreneurship program where they had us do a business plan. Like nobody really works on business plans anymore. You know, I got, to where I am right now, never even having to think about a business plan, uh, even with you know external funding or asking for external funding, like that's not just I don't know, it's just not like a, a thing that was ever present in my life. So I would urge you to consider the typical path that others would have you believe a path to success. And I think that this entrepreneurship community, this digital entrepreneurship community is getting better and better every day and it's getting larger and it's more in your face with such, you know, YouTube channels and blogs. And I think that that's a path worth pursuing and maybe if not pursuing yet, at least studying and learning about because I remember me from 18 to about 22, 23, the only business experience I've had was being part of a franchise that was a home care franchise. That's, that's all I've ever done, which is, I guess, something that I started pretty early in university. Uh, but you know it's it's something to worth thinking about and that's actually another point that is worth bringing up in your teens and your 20s everybody always tells you find out what you love and what you're passionate about i think a lot more is said about should be said about finding what you don't like because i think that's a lot more important i've been working since i was 12 years old actually when i was 13 that was the cutoff selling chocolates and plazas i got to canada when i was 11 and then i kind of lied about my age and i said that i was 13 but i was actually 12. i started selling chocolates and plazas and since 12 till about 19 i've had about 10 jobs in all different you know, in all different industries from having a photo lab to working in the meat department of a grocery store to having some retail experience in gas, B2, brown shoes, right? Uh, Zara to being a paper boy to selling chocolates on plazas, like everything. I I've tried a bunch of things and I just figured out I don't like doing that stuff, especially the retail clothing stores where they force you to sell things that you don't really believe should be sold. Like, you know, guess is really guilty of that where they have, if you work at guess, you know what I'm talking about. They have you know, numbers and you got to hit those numbers and they push you to do sales of things that you don't believe in. Like, I really didn't like that model. I thought it was kind of bullshit. I would really encourage you to go out there and to try a lot of things. And if you don't like it, just move on from it. Also, another thing worth saying is me now turning 27, I feel like I'm thinking like a 30 something year old. And I think that's been due to all the experiences that I've had in terms of business and travel. But man, 20s is like, I think it's like level one. Whereas your teens, so like eight, 17, 18, 19, is not even level one. I think it's like training. You know, you're still you're still trying to form your own opinions and you're trying to form you're kinda of going with the flow with the whole high school thing and like getting into university. And I think your all of your twenties is like that's like the time to really fuck up and to try a bunch of things, have a bunch of things not work out, going into different fields, trying an entrepreneur and like this channel is just not a it's not just about, you know, entrepreneurships and Amazon. At least that's not what I want it to be. I th I want it to be more of my documentation of what I'm doing and what I'm figuring out as I go. That what I actually might not be a bad idea for you to start a channel of your own that you can look back a year to two years back. Like I sometimes watch some of my first videos and I think, man, like that was so long ago and I thought very differently and my mindset was very different from what it is now. And I would encourage you to also document your journey either through journaling like this or YouTube uh, channel or your blog, depending if you like to write or not. The biggest thing, and this is something that Harrison and I, my friend Harrison here in Guangzhou, we're talking about yesterday. The biggest thing that in hindsight, we look at ourselves and our friends that I think a lot of 20 something year olds get wrong is the FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. Uh, and I'm not just talking about going to parties like, oh man, you know, let me see what's going on. The best case scenario party on Saturday night and then picking one because that's kind of what I used to do a lot. Uh, but it's also with business, you know, we both had stories of friends who just get obsessed with one thing, let's say Facebook advertising and they just plow, plow, plow on Facebook advertising and then they'll lock down the client. And then when it gets a little bit boring, they want to go on the next thing like copywriting, you know, and they'll just consume courses and they're like, look at me, I'm so entrepreneurial, hashtag startup, uh, whatever, hashtag digital entrepreneur. Like I'm learning these courses, but it's like, I feel like there's a correlation with the more the person is on social media trying to show you how much of an entrepreneur they are or how much of a hustler they are, the less they're actually doing. And sometimes I have my moments where like, you know, I want to like post some stuff online, but I just find that when my mind drifts into this 
China manufacturing Amazon stage where I'm putting in you know six to eight hours a day with like a gym visit in the middle of that day I don't really like I don't even think about like oh I gotta post something on Instagram I gotta go on Facebook and post a status I think there is quite a I think the quietest people t usually tend to be you know doing more and saying less about it which I think is worth paying attention to so I would say try to focus on one thing and this is a Taylor Pearson concept try to just focus on one thing whatever it is so this is something that i wrote earlier in my journal entry uh, when i was in colombia the concept is basically try to uh, line up or write down as many things that are possible to you right now for example let's say you don't have money so amazon fba is kind of out of the question but let's say learning copywriting learning facebook ads through a course that maybe your friend has or maybe free online courses learning how to code or learning you know how to develop a shopify store or putting up an upwork you know some sort of a talent or skill that you have anything write them all out and choose one and just blindly commit to it for the next three months 90 days blindly everything else like goes by the wayside even if tomorrow you have a million dollar opportunity just no i mean maybe if you're starting yes maybe but but seriously consider this just choosing one thing for 90 days everything else hey man i have this new nope i'm working on my own thing hit me back 90 days and at the end of those 90 days you look back and you think and you say to yourself what did i like about this what i what did i not like about this and then at the end of the 90 days you decide if you want to commit the next 90 days and keep going or you want to change paths because i think the the biggest thing that'll screw you up is like doing two three weeks of something not seeing any progress and then quitting and then kind of you know screwing off i think if you commit solid 90 days to one certain you know pathway i think at the end of 90 days like the first month will be hard because you gotta make those uh, you know get new habits you have to change your way of thinking second month gets a little bit easier and the third month is where i think you really start seeing payoffs and then at the end of the three months you're like wow i've kind of you know i've made some headway on this path that i'm on and then you can decide whether you want to keep going or not uh, that would be my biggest recommendation don't have fear of fomo you're not missing out on anything wherever you go so to speak there you are it's not going to help you just doing a bunch of things for experience's sake when you're doing them for a month or two that's not really how experience is built and i think gary v and jordan b peterson they talk about this a lot where everybody wants everything now you know the one most annoying i think video by gary v that i've ever watched is this girl that called in and she's like okay gary i'll shake your hand at when i'm 25 and i'm a millionaire and i'm like shut the fuck up like what what are you what are you talking about like you're not doing anything right now and then you just like where and that's what gary v said as well it's like where is this millionaire dollar idea coming from like okay i get it it's cool to say and you know maybe as a personal goal it's a nice round number but like all you really need and this is kind of what i found out like really all you really need to live a life of freedom is like three grand a month that's it you don't need more than that like Chiang Mai you can live for $1,500 and that's like food co-working space rent and going out on the weekend um, Guangzhou 2000 to $2,500 we have a decent apartment in a really nice area I got an office that we work at which is this place I got a gym membership and I eat really healthy steaks potatoes veggies and a lot of salads and a lot of green juices 2000 to 2500 like where's this idea of million the only reason why I'm pushing beyond like for me $36,000 a year made online gives me complete freedom everything else i'm just putting it back into the business because i'm really interested in growing this and making the brand and like seeing how all the pieces connect and like expanding my amazon empire like that's the only reason why i want more money it's kind of like you know it's fuel for my engine that i want to build and i want to see how far i can take it it's more of a hobby at this point but it's a hobby that i'm really really into as far as survivability really all you need is 36,000 usd dollars a year and you can live really damn well depending on I mean, where you are in the world like you can't really live in hong kong i mean you could in hong kong but it's not gonna be really well but like anywhere south america anywhere southeast asia a lot of asia uh some europe i don't know but some europe or smaller towns in america and canada right reconsider your beliefs and really think about why you're doing what you're doing for example university the work the kind of work that you want to get into the belief that you want a million or a trillion or a billion dollars like really where is that coming from is it because somebody else said it and you think it's cool so you try and try and say it or is there actual you know weight behind what you're trying to, to do and accomplish 
I think one of the biggest things too is this will really help you with getting your mind clear is meditation. I've started meditating about two, three years ago and I've been very erratical and non-consistent. But if you can, if you can download the app Headspace and use it just 10 minutes a day, you know, I know it sucks. And every morning I have to like fight myself. Okay, sit down, record this, like stop being lazy. I really have to find myself, but after those 10 minutes, it's really enjoyable and it's really nice. And I think in your 20s, your brain is still developing. It's still going through development. So the more you can minimize the drug use, uh, recreational drug use, and the more you can minimize alcohol, and the more you can maximize sleep, exercise, and meditation, I 100% guarantee you like this will pay off big. And I know this is like, man, when I was 21, 22, and you told me, hey, you know, do meditation and go, I did go to the gym, but like go to the gym more, meditate and eat healthy and like don't do drugs. I would have been like, man, fuck you. Like, <laughs> I don't care, you know, I'm like living life out here, I'm having fun, you know, don't tell me what to do. But at the very least, like try meditation, you know, and try, you know, not to booze as much, but alcohol is fun. I remember there was many weekends where I took it a little too far and it was really cool. I think one of the biggest things too is I can directly correlate how this led into my entrepreneurship career and I guess my Amazon business, how everything kind of got me to the mindset of self-development. The very first step was trying to be good with girls. If you're a young guy, I think you should really prioritize this part of your life because this is going to be a huge part of your life. I think understanding the female and the male mindset and how we do things and how we interact in a romantic and in friendship fashion, I think it's extremely important because when I was younger in high school, I was not really good with girls. I didn't really know how to talk to them and I would look at more popular guys and be like, wow, these guys are cool. You know, they they know how to talk to girls. They have friends as girls. They have girlfriends. And I was a little bit envious of that. So I started, me and Ryan started just Googling around, you know, how to get girls. And we actually like, the first thing that we found was how to be an asshole.com, I think. That was a website. And it was basically a guy describing how to be asshole to girls, which in hindsight is pretty hilarious. And then me personally, I got into pickup. And I know pickup has is a very loaded term depending on how, you know, how you see it, like the whole Red Pill Association and Rouge V and RSD associations. But honestly, like it was, it was good to get into that at that stage because back then mystery was just coming out with his like Venusian arts. And then I got onto RSD and eventually you outgrow it. But when you're kind of lost and you're going with the flow, like it gets you and, and like wanting to be with girls and wanting to date girls and wanting girls to like you. It's one of the first steps that you take in self-development. Like eventually you reach a point in the pickup, so to speak, in your pickup or like learning how to be good with girls there's a stage where you reach where you realize that girls are really attracted to certain behaviors and to to certain characteristics of a man for example guys are attracted to girls for their looks girls are attracted to guys for their behavior you know when you when you do what you say when you're solid when you're honest you say what you want if you don't want a relationship you say i'm i don't really i'm not looking to date someone and if you are then we're not compatible being very honest up front instead of playing these little games you know showing us signs of maturity, you know, and just being a man that other men want to be around and being a man that other women are naturally attracted to. I think if you're a guy in your teens, like, you know, 17, 18, 19, you, you know, your hormones are kicking in, you really like girls and you want girls to like you, or you're in your 20s, I think one of the biggest things is learning, learning how to interact properly with women and learning the motivations behind it. I'll give you one book that a friend of mine gave me last year, which I think it's worth for everyone men women old young kids like everyone everyone should read because it's a very mature outlook on men and women interactions how they perceive each other and what they really want from a biological evolutionary perspective it's called the manual i'm gonna have to double check the artist uh, or sorry the writer and i'm gonna put it in the description below but it's called the manual basically uh, what women want and how to give it to them Highly recommend this book. I think it's it's a very interesting read. One of the best books of 2017 that I've personally read. Yeah, you know, women are always going to be around you, whether you're just a, you know, just a playboy, just a young guy out there hitting the clubs and bars, having fun, whether you have a girlfriend, how to better understand her and future in the future when you have a wife and how to understand her better and allow her to understand you and create an environment where you can raise children. You can be happy together long term for years and years to come after your marriage. For me, pick up directly related to me wanting to be good with girls, hence me developing myself, going to the gym more, reading more, and trying to be honest more, and then seeing results from that, and then thinking, wow, how else can I improve myself? 
well, I want to work also work for myself. I don't want to work for someone else. And you know, the whole business and it's kind of like it's hand in hand, like the whole gym, healthy eating, being good with women, and uh, being your own boss, so to speak, or like you know, owning your time. Those all kind of go hand in hand, and it's just one thing reinforces the other. Where uh, right now, you know, my head is just strictly on business, on learning Chinese, on uh, meditation, like I said, uh, working out, just really enjoying life from a very mature perspective. Whereas when I was younger. Women were a huge part of it, so you know, take that advice、uh, with a grain of salt. But I highly recommend that you start looking into your motivations for romance and with women, and to get better at understanding them and get practice. Like actually, get out there and talk to girls. And I know it sucks, but I used to do you know ten sets a day. I would just go to the mall and just go up to girls and start random conversations, and it really sucked. And like girls, women. You have no idea how much you destroy a guy when you're like, "Ugh, don't talk to me," or like, "Ugh, get away from me," you know, like that that pain of rejection. There was actually, I think, just a quick aside. There was a show、um, I found like a little insert of show in, on YouTube. I think it was like Geek Geeks and Beautiful Women or some Geeks and and be- Geek and the Beauty or something like that. Beauty and the Geek. And one of the challenges was for these. Good-looking girls to get dressed up really bad, like they dress them up really bad and just kind of like dress them up as nerds, as like geeky girls, and sent them out to approach guys at a bar. And they were talking about it, how it was like the most traumatizing experience of rejection. And like it's like basically the challenge was, girls go get a drink from a guy at a bar, and they would start. Talk- they don't know how to open up, like hey, how are? You? And they're like they're not. You know, they made them on purpose, like not very appealing, not very attractive.、And、they're like, hey guys,、uh, maybe a drink.、And、he's like, no thanks. And then they're like, "Oh my God, I was so traumatized." After I was like, "Well, this is like a guy's life every day when he's trying to muster up the courage to go talk to you. Like, like, be a little bit nicer. I mean, yes, you don't like him. Tell him I'm not really interested. Like, but don't be a bitch about it, please. You know, I hope you understand. Another big lesson for my twenties is, especially when you're in high school and right after high school when you separate and go to university, is this concept of friends by choice. Versus friends by circumstance. When you're in grade school and when you're in high school, you just tend to grow up with the same people. Like you know, you, you have one class and you kind of see each other year after year. You know, whether it's grade school or high school, and then you just become friends. You just kind of fall into those friend groups. But after high school, you you tend to separate, or you get to go to college together or university together. And I know this idea is really appealing. It's like, man, I want to hold on to my best buddy, or like I want to, you know, my best girlfriend. Like I just want to do everything with them, and I want to keep doing this because it's scary. It's a scary new experience. But I want you to really reevaluate where you want to go in life and how you want to spend your life and the friends that you have around you. There's nothing wrong with keeping your high school friends or keeping your university friends. In fact. Two out of the three of my closest friends from grade school and high school—they all have a nine-to-five job. They're all, you know, working. Tr- like one guy's working, two guys working trades. One guy is working for a marketing company. They have a nine-to-five, and they have girlfriends. Two of them are getting married back in Toronto, and we still talk. We're all still friends. But it's a matter of how you want to think and where you want to take your life towards. I need to align yourself with those kind of people. I wanted to travel to make money online, have business online. That's why I came out to Chiang Mai to be with Ryan, Noam, my friend Rico here now in China. Like those were the guys that I gravitated towards. I still kept the friendships that I had, and we still kind of connect. You know, tell funny stories. I tell him about my travel, tell him about their work, and we can still shoot the shit. You know, at a bar, but. It's not going to be like, hey, let's do a weekly mastermind together because it's just not how those guys roll. I need to realize that you don't have to give up your old friends for new ones, but just know what friendships are there by circumstance because you just really get along, and what friendships are by choice because you get along and you're both in the same kind of niche, which would be like digital online business, you know, travel and making money online. Know that separation, know that difference, and I promise you that if you really put some effort in. The friends by choice that you make will be probably some of your best, most aligned friendships you will ever have. And I'm lucky. I'm lucky this way because、um, I think not by default, but like by trying really hard and going through that whole, you know, getting good with girls thing, where like I joined a bunch of clubs, not clubs, but like communities around Toronto, where I met a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys we all met through picking up women. And you know, getting good with girls and talking to them and you know, trying to. Understand each other more, and like through that growth, like we all, a lot of our group kind of translated into entrepreneurship and making money online and traveling. Like those two things for you, young guys, those two things are very, very correlated. So I would highly, highly recommend that you look into this area of your life. I feel like it's it's a double-edged sword. 
trying to give advice or trying to talk to someone who's in their early to mid 20s because I wouldn't have listened and I'm probably not going to listen. You know, even if somebody, well, if somebody comes along now, I listen a lot because I think I've, I've matured a bit more. But like, just take the sin, let it brew in the back of your head. This is, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm not even tell, giving you advice. I'm just trying to describe from my perspective what I've learned going along the way. And like, maybe you get something from it. Another point, take care of your body. I think that Kiefer had a friend in Australia who's this lawyer guy in his mid thirties. He said, Kiefer, I'll tell you this right now. If you really want, like thirties are the best time of your life. If you can avoid two things, and this is gonna be a little controversial. This is not for me. However, I do agree with this. If you can take care of your body and your health and you can avoid getting married, your thirties will be the best years of your life. I personally believe that, you know, you needed to get married at 20 before because healthcare wasn't as advanced, people were dying earlier. I think that communities were much more conservative than they are now. Today, there's so much possibility that you, I'm not saying I'm against relationships or long-term relationships in general, but I would say try to put the marriage on the back burner. I think a marriage is the promise of two people to really be together, signing the documents, you know, putting the ring on each other and spending, I guess, spending the next foreseeable future together where you start building a family unit. It's done for a reason. It's to buy a house, to buy property, to live together and to build family for the future. But I think your 20s should be done exploring. It should be done having fun, you know, meeting a lot of people. I'm gonna say it, meeting a lot of girls. How do you know she's the one if you've only been with like four girls in your lifetime? Go out, date a bunch, you know? Go see what girls are like. I'm not necessarily saying, you know, have a bunch of one night stands, but I'm saying go on a bunch of dates, like meet different people with different characteristics. Meet, you know, this goes for guys and for girls at the same time. Like, you know, see what's out there, you know, have, have a certain standard of, it goes back to what you don't like. Find out what you don't like because a lot of, behaviors in men and in women you're just not gonna jive with and don't be nice about it just be selfish you're like okay i don't like that i'm not agreeing with that therefore i'm gonna gravitate away from that and as you push away from what you don't like inevitably you're gonna float into what you normally enjoy so there's nothing wrong with that but i would really urge you to reconsider having any kind of location dependent marriage in your 20s i would strongly urge you to consider keep dating, even if it's long distance, short distance, if you meet the right person that's for you, amazing, that's great. I'm not saying, you know, I'm a big believer in love too, you know, I'm, I'm human, I have feelings, but I'm just saying this whole sign the paper, be together, it like, it's just, it puts a lot of stress on you. And when you're in your 20s, I just don't think you're as mature or as financially ready or as responsible as you would be in your late 20s, early 30s, right? Just something to consider, like really try to not get into things that are a lot harder to get out of, is all I'm gonna say. My personal belief is I'm probably not gonna get married if ever get married, I, you know, but we can maybe get into that later. No need for, you know, for me delving into the future as we're talking about the past. I think that to, to finish it off, if you follow this channel and if you've seen some of the things that I've been doing, uh, which is having an online business and traveling around the world and eventually settling down in Guangzhou, China. I think that if you're gonna travel, travel with purpose. Don't just go, I mean, there is something to be said about backpacking and backpacking is super fun and I've done it around Southeast Asia and, it, and I went back to Canada home. But if you're gonna travel and you have the opportunity to consider this idea is travel with purpose meaning you go to places to see or meet someone specific, or you wanna go for the community. For example, the Chiang Mai, Medellin, Colombia would be optimal ones where it's like, I wanna travel there, but I also wanna meet the community there and the people that are there and learn from them in terms of business or working online or something rather. Get that double whammy with going to a new place and discovering new things and riding your scooter around and like having a lot of fun and, and enjoying yourself but also getting life experience, life knowledge. One of the best things for Canadians, I think, is the Australian one year working visa, which Kiefer got, and he spent a year just working in Australia and really enjoying himself and meeting a bunch of great people like Dan, who came to Chiang Mai, and then I ended up visiting those guys on my impromptu Chiang Mai trip in one of my previous videos. I mean, you know, we, all, we both met him, he's a Quebecois guy, but we both met him in Australia, and he's a really cool dude. 
So if you're gonna travel, like go somewhere for, for a reason, with a purpose, you know, don't just go there just to backpack, lay on the beach, and then you know, kind of screw off and waste a bunch of time. Mind you, I did that, so I have no say in this really, because like I said, a lot of my 20 earlys were kind of spent, I'm not gonna say wasted, but really spent on partying, having a lot of fun, going to university, you know, social circle, learning how to be better with girls, you know, gym, stuff like that, like starting my own business, or I guess being part of the franchise, and then later on starting my own business. I guess I'll wrap it up there. I think those are some of the biggest takeaways that I've had so far over the past 10 years from 17 to 27 now. I really hope you got some value. If you're curious, I can probably include some 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 of the best books that I've ever read. I'll probably do a separate video on some of the best books, some of the best kind of online skills that you should be developing regardless of whether you're going to university or not or going to college or not. Yeah, you know, relax. Be patient. Don't be in a rush. You know, you're not missing out on anything, I promise you. Just one step at a time, you know, 20s are there for you to explore, to have a little bit of fun, maybe have a lot of fun, you know, and don't be so hard on yourself. I think that's another big issue that I was going through is I was really, really hard on myself and a lot of negative self-talk has not developed the best uh, mindset that I eventually had to reverse in my mid-20s and uh, you know, really come to be the person that I am today. Don't be so hard on yourself, you know, treat yourself as your best friend and uh, learn to love yourself wherever you are. Like, hey, you know, I fucked up a lot, but we're starting here now and now I'm going to be better. So I hope this was helpful. You know, I've tried to kind of give you the best of what I got. If you like the videos, always leave a like. I really appreciate that. But the most important thing is if this made you feel or think about anything or some type of way, please leave a comment down below. I really like jumping in there and interacting with you guys, whether it's good or bad. If it's something negative or quote unquote hateful, I'll probably give a very cheeky response. So, you know, it's just kind of how I roll. But yeah, you know, uh, give me some feedback on this. I really want to hear from you guys. How are you enjoying these videos? Uh, you know, do you want me to just like, hey, get back to the Amazon manufacturing stuff? Or is this kind of providing some value as well? I'd really like to hear it, to hear from you. Okay, thanks.